Hi everybody, Alex the Ployer from Expert Forex and in today's video we're going to be talking about how to select the best accounts that you can link your account to in our Link to Success trade copying service. Now in the service you can link your account to that of of successful robot traders and let's have a look at what is on offer so here's a list of the accounts that you can link to and let's have a look at the number involved here and we have 82 accounts that you can choose to link your account to now if you've just joined this service it is very very confusing which account should i be linked my own personal account to so what we've done in this particular page is we've actually gone and analyzed the accounts and come up with some suggestions on how you can start your journey in linking accounts. And let's go to that section. And here we are, as it says, it's an account you can consider to link to this week because we've done the analysis this week and these are the accounts that are showing the best prospects. So let's go and have a look at what we take into account to make this suggestion and let's talk about other factors that traders take into account in order to select accounts. So on your screen here is a actually a Excel spreadsheet that you can download if you click on that you can download it you can sort it in any way you want so it's a very informative bit of information so what we've done is we've identified about 14 accounts that look very reasonable for you to start your journey on and I'm going to go through the criteria that we use because you can learn a lot from the this criteria in your future selection of linkable accounts so let's have a look at the criteria that we're using so on this on this list you've got the list of providers and then the first criteria that we're looking at is floating profit and loss now the reason for that is very simple you don't want to join a signal provider who has a large floating profit and loss amount you want one with a small one because that one will retrieve the, 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 the loss very quickly. And sometimes these figures are actually positive and you can get, start trading straight away. If you join a single provider that has a large floating loss, you might have to wait a few days and sometimes even weeks until that signal provider has done its profit retrieval and is starting to trade normally again. So that's number one criteria. We look at only accounts that have small open trade numbers and we look for ones that are under a thousand bucks and there you can see and if you think a uh, thousand bucks is too high then uh, you can still find ones with 20. There's one with a 22 positive balance and so on so there we are that's the first criteria that we look for then we start looking at the age of the account now the reason for that is that the older the account is the more reliable it is it has traded through really varied market conditions therefore it makes it a more robust account and here we have the ages and again we've said we're only going to look at accounts that are older than 90 days and there are there's the list and you can see there's some accounts here that are 358 days i mean that is phenomenal almost a year of trading there's another one 335 so the age of an account proves that the the trader can trade through all kinds of market in market conditions. Then we go have a look at the average monthly gain. Now you want that to be quite high if you take it into account with all the other conditions. It's not the only one to take into account. As you can see, these accounts have to meet all of these conditions. Not only one of them, they have to meet all six of the conditions that we've set. And we're going to be looking at more than six later on. But the monthly average gain has to be more than 10%. Now, 10% a month is already very high. But we're saying we were only interested in accounts that are bigger than 10%. Uh, bigger than 10% and there you can see all of those accounts meet those requirements. 
Then we look at the drawdown situation. And in order to look at the drawdown situation, we look at the last eight weeks. The reason why we look at the last eight weeks is that these traders change their settings, change their strategies on a continuous basis. So you need to evaluate them in the current market conditions, not three months ago or four months ago when the market conditions were completely different. So what we do is we look at the last eight weeks and then we look at the worst drawdown experience in those last eight weeks. And when we, when we talk about weekly drawdown, what we mean, what we mean is the, the difference between the opening equity and the closing equity for that w week. If there's a difference there, it would be a drawdown and we would uh, record that number. So it's not really the biggest drawdown that there was but it was the drawdown from the start of the week to the end of the week and here you can see the drawdowns and we specified here that they mustn't be big, bigger than a thousand dollars and as you can see they all meet that requirement i mean there's one year with six dollar drawdown and some really small ones so drawdown is an important consideration then we actually say all right well what have the gains been over the last eight weeks we're comparing we're taking looking at the drawdown but let's look at the gains so we want uh, accounts that have got, had had gains more than a thousand dollars and again there you can see the accounts have all had more than a thousand dollar gain a thousand dollars is uh, ten percent on a ten thousand dollar account so that's uh, that is how we have measured specified that minimum requirement then we come to an important ratio for prop traders but also for traders that link want to link to the accounts because it is a ratio that looks at your drawdown compared to your gains and it says okay if you've risked four hundred and fifty nine dollars and you've made three thousand dollars you've made a six hundred and fifty percent gain on your risk so you've risked that much but you've made so much gain and that gives you an ideal idea of your risk return ratio when using these accounts and you can see some of these accounts have phenomenal risk return ratios and uh, one over one thousand there over one thousand almost five thousand over there almost 2,000 there, there's one with 38,000 percent at 2,000 and 1,000. So these are the accounts that you want to do use for prop trading because what's happening is the drawdowns are low, the income is high and that's all you need to be a good prop trader is control your losses and have high income. So, so those are the eight factors. Now what we then say is that it, an account has to meet all of those requirements to qualify to be considered for trading next week. So there they are. There are the accounts. You can go and have a look at them. But most importantly, that you appreciate those eight, those six factors that we use to do the evaluation. So there's other ways of also doing more advanced evaluation. And the one is to look at the smoothness of the equity chart for that particular instrument. And I'm going to just start again with this first one here. Let's have a look at the FX Blue account. And here you can see this the, uh, the equity chart here. One of the things I'd like to see it a little bit smoother than this, there are a lot of flat times. Now the flat times are when the account is in drawdown and you can see there are a few flat times. Let's go and have a look at another one. That one wasn't too bad, but let's go and have a look at another one, link 12. Now here you can see this is a lot smoother. It still has those flat periods, but it is a lot smoother than the previous chart. And that's what you want to look for is you want a smooth chart with not too many flat. There's a flat period, but that happened three months ago. Since then, it seems to be going up nice and steady. So the equity chart is always a good guide as to the performance of the instrument. You want to see continuous smooth, a smooth equity chart. You don't want one that, that sort of has flat periods and then goes up and has flat periods and that type of thing. So equity charts are, is another consideration you can look at. Then we mentioned yeah, how many other fo uh, traders are following the signals. Now that's not always the most accurate way because a lot of 
traders are um, just follow my leader they just follow uh, other traders uh, but it is a guide as to uh, which accounts to follow and where you can get this information is in the actual list of accounts that you can link to here you can see investors and you can see how many people are, are following the various accounts and what's nice about this list is that you can sort it so basically uh, we now want to see who are the the, um, uh, the largest which accounts I have the largest following and there we have a link 24 then we have link 12 I think link 12 is one of the accounts that we looked at let me just go and have a look yeah link 12 is one of the accounts we looked at let's see a uh, link uh, uh, Let's have a look at link 106 there's link 106 so so both link 12 and link 106 have a nice following and that you can use as a guide to to decide which accounts you want to follow now for instance link 24 up there is not on this list because at the moment it is going through a drawdown phase and therefore you wouldn't go and join that particular account while it's in a drawdown phase and how do you find out whether it's in a drawdown phase uh, you go to our schedule that does a risk analysis provides risk analysis information and you then can look at what the actual floating pro profit and loss is for each account and you and if we look at and let's just sort this um, in order you'll see so, right so you can see there are some accounts that have got huge drawdowns there's link 24 that we just looked at that at the moment is, is in drawdown these can reverse at any time so that is certainly one you don't want to join an account with a large drawdown larger than maybe a thousand dollars you want to join some accounts down here um, have got a, a positive there's some accounts here with positive drawdown so in other words um, there we are some some positive accounts down here and there are some that are have very small drawdown so that's where you get the that information from so let's go to the next point then the next point is only include index or non-forex instruments when you have lots of experience with uh, with uh, linked trading those particular instruments are a little bit more tricky each broker has their own setup and you need to have some experience in link trading before you move to index trading or metal trading or Bitcoin and those kind of instruments so if we sort this column on the um, largest monthly average gain there it is you'll see that link eight is trading the nasdaq now a lot of people say oh that's number one i want to trade it it is an index it is going to be more difficult some brokers don't call it the nasdaq somebody some of them call it something else there's a lot of complications with 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 index trading and that's why i'm saying that to in the beginning keep your risk low do not get involved in complicated instruments Forex instruments are fine. They're not complicated. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the drawdown shown in this column here is not the maximum drawdown that that account might have encountered. It is the difference between the equity balances in the beginning and the end of the week. If you want to see the drawdown figures in more detail, then it is best to do that in FX blue and let's go and have a look at link 12 for instance we can go and experiment with that one and see if we can get more information around drawdowns now link 12 has got a nice uh, uh, balance chart but what I like looking at what what will show you the drawdowns is the equity chart so I'm putting the equity chart so the equity chart put uh, puts the balance chart up but it also the red is actually the equity uh, balance and and these spikes down there are when the account goes into drawdown now you can see in the recent few weeks there has been no drawdown and this spike in fact happened 
in December. So we've already in March now. So the traders certainly learned what to do and to avoid those kind of spikes by then. But the, here you can see the drawdown that's happened. It's uh, the account balance was 30,000. The actual account went down to 21,000. So there was a 9,000 drawdown. Now there's another way of seeing uh, the drawdowns. You can go to statistics and you can go to charts and you can uh, look at floating profit and loss by day or by hour so if you want it by hour it's very accurate i'm going to just go go for the day and this gives you a much better view of the drawdowns here you can see that spike that we were looking at, at at earlier you can actually see the size of that spike it was just over eight thousand dollars and there you are and there's the, the previous spike so this chart floating profit and loss by day gives you a good indication let's have, have a look at the hourly one so we can also do that on hours and the hourly one now you, here you can see a more accurate one because the hourly one actually shows that this account at some stage had gone below minus twelve thousand. So that was a huge drawdown. Really battled that this, that account really battled a lot. But this is the information you can gather about any account that you want to link to. You can come to FX Blue, use these charts that we're talking about at the moment. If you now look at the statement of uh, Link 21, uh, it looks like a great uh, investment year. The chart's going up nicely. Uh, it's nicely positive. In fact, it's got a positive floating opening balance at the moment. But if we didn't look at that drawdown number, we wouldn't be, be aware of the risks involved. And also, as I say, you always need to look at how far back that, those events happen because the traders learn and change the settings to avoid those kind of drawdowns. And I hope you've learned something about uh, account selection and also risk management because we, we've mentioned six factors here and we've mentioned four factors down here. That's an, uh, uh, 10 factors that you need to take into account when selecting the accounts that you can link to. And when you link to the service, you get three accounts that you can link to. Uh, if you want more, you can purchase subscriptions for the to increase your the accounts that you can link to to a much larger number. So now that you have this knowledge, you certainly need to come back to this page and evaluate the accounts that you intend linking to to these criteria. If you've been in the service for a while and you are not achieving the results that you were hoping for, come back to this schedule because and tick whether you took all these factors into account when you linked to a particular account. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and from me, Alex Deploy, cheerio.